Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Carlos Mislera. I'm a medical oncologist here at uh, St. Joseph's Hospital. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about some questions related to testicular cancer and prostate cancer, given uh, it is November this month. So let's start without further ado. Prostate and testicular cancer, difference. So prostate cancer and testicular cancer, the main difference is the prostate cancer derives from the glandular cells of your prostate, which is responsible for producing the fluid in a male's semen. And testicular cancer it comes from the cells that ultimately uh, produce a sperm. And the nature of this difference uh, results in prostate and testicular cancer having significantly different epidemiology as well as a treatment. Prostate and testicular cancer prevalence. These are probably better understood as incidents, and I would say the prostate cancer is quite common. In fact, it is the, uh, one of the most common causes of cancer in men worldwide. Uh, and because of how common it is, it's also the third leading cause of cancer-related death in men. About one in eight men will ultimately end up getting prostate cancer, but much fewer than this will actually die of their prostate cancer because it's a very a treatable condition. Uh, Testicular cancer, on the other hand, will occur in about one in 250 men uh, in their lifetime. The, the key difference between them to be aware of is that testicular cancer is really a disease of young men, particularly peaking in the ages of 25 to 35, whereas prostate cancer is the disease of older men. Prostate and testicular cancer causes. The majority of cases, there aren't any clearly identifiable causes for most cases of prostate and testicular cancer. There are some modestly associated risk factors, at least for testicular cancer, such as undescended testes uh, or a, a genetic um, a mutation in sex differentiation. But in the vast majority of cases, there will be no identifiable risk factor. And even for kids, for example, who have an undescended testes, the majority will not go on to develop testicular cancer. And the similar story goes for prostate cancer, with the primary risk factors being age or being of a black ethnicity or having radiation exposure previously to the prostate. But with the exception with prostate cancer being that there's a much stronger heritable component with as much as 15 to 20 percent of cases, at least in the advanced disease setting, being related to an identifiable genetic mutation, usually in genes related to DNA repair pathways. Prostate and testicular cancer prevention. So there aren't any clearly elucidated ways of preventing prostate or testicular cancer specifically. If I were to make a recommendation though, it would be those lifestyle measures that generally apply to chronic illness prevention, such as exercise or eating a healthy and balanced diet. Uh, furthermore, many of the risk factors that are even related to prostate and testicular cancer, like I mentioned, are typically non-modifiable. And for example, you can't choose who your parents are or what your ethnicity or your age is. Prostate and testicular cancer screening. Testicular cancer, I'll start with since it's the easy one in that there is no recommended screening for testicular cancer in part because it is such a rare condition and it is a highly treatable condition with cure rates being over 95 percent even for men with advanced stages of the disease. Prostate cancer is a little more controversial. The purpose of prostate cancer screening is really to reduce your chances of dying of prostate cancer. You know, if such benefits of prostate cancer screening do exist, what I can tell you is that they're relatively small. And if there are uh, uh, harms of, of not pursuing prostate cancer screening, they are also quite small. These benefits have to be weighed against the known potential harms of doing prostate cancer screening. The result of this is that we have different guidelines recommending slightly different things. But overall, the reputable guidelines will all tell you, and which I would agree with, that you should have a discussion with your primary care provider about whether prostate cancer screening, particularly if you're a man over the age of 50, is right for you, given 
your specific life circumstances, your values, and your individual risk profile. I think if there's one take home message that I would like to deliver to you all as it pertains to prostate and testicular cancer, um, it is that if you are male and you are experiencing related symptoms such as testicular swelling or pain or uh, prostate uh, or pelvic pain, erectile dysfunction, or otherwise are having new symptoms that are concerning to you, please bring this up sooner rather than later to your primary care provider. It is not cause for panic or anxiety as likely these will be unrelated to the cancer issues. But in the unlikely event that it is, presenting sooner rather than later to your primary care provider could be the difference between a simple fix versus having to see me.